Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Nowadays I'm exploring the Airbus A320 Neo by Anybuilds and in this regard I'm making a series of videos so that it's easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. In this regard I have uploaded many videos in which I have told you how to configure the MCDU, how to configure the electronic flight bag, how to fly this plane on autopilot, descent management, ILS approach and landing, what to do uh, once you land this plane and uh, how to perform a go around. Now in this video, I'm going to tell you how to perform an RNAV or an RNP approach. RNAV actually stands for Area Navigation and RNP stands for Required Navigational Precision. For the jet planes, if you look at the approach plates, uh, they usually say RNP approach. So it's a very simple approach and um, now before I proceed further, I would just like to tell you one thing that every time when I'm making a video, I always keep this thing in my mind that the beginners will be watching it. Therefore, I try to keep things really simple and to the point. Uh, however, uh, for this video, I'm assuming that you are familiar with the ILS approach and landing procedure and you know how to prepare this plane for the descent. Although I will be also going through these procedures during this video, but, uh, but you should be really familiar with these procedures because I will not be going into the details. So let's begin uh, this video by telling you what is an RNAV or an RNP approach. Once you are about to land at a runway, there are two types of approaches or techniques that you can use, which is uh, uh, the first one is actually uh, the precision approach and the second one is non-precision approach. In precision approach, you have a ground-based navigation device, which is known as a localizer, which actually guides the plane towards the runway. And uh, it also uh, determines the vertical path or the glide slope of the plane. In non-precision approach, no ground-based device is used. Only in one type of uh, non-precision approach, the VOR approach, uh, there is a ground-based device, but it's not accurate. Once I will just make a video for the VOR, uh, you will know how precise and non-precise it is. But uh, for the RNAV approach, it's a non-precision approach. No ground-based um, navigation device is used. The plane uses uh, the, its own uh, GPS navigation device uh, to find the runway, to align itself with the runway and then follow the glide slope which is also known as the glide path once you are doing an RNAV approach. Today I will be doing this flight from Lahore to Islamabad. It's a short flight and I'm starting in from the runway so that I can just take my time uh, to give you the briefing about the approach and then uh, select the approach and then from there I will further um, uh, carry on with the video. So let's uh, first go to the MCDU and select the approach. So right now for this flight, I've selected the departure, which will be 36 right for Lahore. And uh, for Islamabad, uh, let me just select it for you. Now let's go to arrivals and uh, select the approach. So you are seeing that ILS is coming. I will not be performing an ILS approach. And if you just scroll down, you will see our nav approach has started to appear over here. And over here, you can see VOR is also coming. So RNAV and VOR are both non-precision approaches, whereas in VOR, the ground-based device is used to navigate the plane towards the runway and an RNAV GPS is used. So I'm going to land at RNAV 28 lift. I will be using this method and you can see the runway length is also coming and uh, let's select it. And now we have to select uh, the arrival. So the arrival will be in the one aim and just insert and now you have all the information over here related to the approach and arrival in the MCDU and you will see there is no discontinuity coming. Now let's go to the Navigraph charts and see uh, what is the difference between, between arrival and approach because if obviously if you're a beginner you would not be really clear about it so I would just also like to go through it. Now in the sim brief you can see that uh, your route is coming, um, departure from runway 36, uh, 36 right and uh, arrival at runway 28 left in Islamabad. Now you can see that um, in this same brief and there is no approach method coming, whether ILS, RNAV or VOR. So it only ends at the arrival procedure in D1A and that's it and the runway is coming. Then once you're making a flight plan in the MCDU, then you select the type of approach. Now, um, I will just go to the charts and I will tell you what is the difference between arrival and an approach. So in Navigraph, if you go over here and you click this option, you will get the arrival chart. So arrival is actually a procedure how you arrive 
uh, at the approach. <laughs> it's uh, if if I just try to keep things simple for you. So in this flight plan, you will come to Indic, then you will fly in the setting 350 degrees, and uh, then the distance is also coming 25.8 nautical miles, and then you will come to this point, Isdo, and over here, your altitude should be 6,000 and above. And this is a holding pattern also given over here. So if you want to perform a hold over here, you can hold, uh, perform a hold uh, with a maximum speed of 220 knots. And the maximum altitude for this hold is 14,000 feet. And the uh, minimum holding altitude is 6,000 feet. So after the arrival, then you go for the approach. So let's select the approach. If I go over here, I can click this option and I can go to approach. And for runway 28 left, you can see different types of approaches are coming. Now we have an RNP approach. So I will pin this chart and I will also open it. Now this is an RNP approach. It is almost like the ILS approach. And uh, there are some differences in which I'm just going to take you through. Now, as it's a non-precision approach, that's why you can see that uh, for the LNAV and VNAV uh, approach, there is uh, this uh, decision altitude and height coming. It's, it's a bit high. And if you're only going for the LNAV, you can see it's slightly higher than the LNAV and VNAV. Why it is like this? Um, actually, the minimum altitude is actually an altitude at which the pilot actually sees whether the plane is aligned with the runway or not, or whether uh, the runway is even clear or not. We have an RVR in aviation, which is known as runway visual range. So if the runway visual range is really low, and you're coming for a non-precision approach, and you cannot see the runway, by this altitude, then you have to just abort the landing because it's a non-precision approach. You are just like uh, using the GPS for this. And uh, plus, as there is no glide slope um, uh, indicated by the localizer, so that's why it's non-precision. But if I just open the ILSO localizer category two and three approach, you will see that uh, the decision altitude or height is 1,847, which is almost like 100 feet above the runway. So 100 feet above the runway, it's really near to the runway. And still, if you cannot see the runway, then you go for a go around or missed approach or you go to another airport. But in this case, you can see it's 318 feet above the ground. Now, what is LNAV and VNAV? It is actually lateral navigation and vertical navigation. So once you're coming uh, for the approach, uh, whether the plane is uh, aligned with the runway or not, it's going left, it's going right. This is known as your lateral navigation. And vertical navigation is this, that after this point, the IS-411, which is your um, um, final approach fix, the plane will start to descend towards the runway uh, with an angle of three degrees. And you can see at different distances, different altitudes um, are given. So at uh, five DME or five nautical miles away from the runway, you should be 339 feet above the ground over here 3070 feet and uh, three nautical miles 2750 and two nautical miles 2430 feet so distance to runway and altitude it's coming so now as the plane knows that uh, at different distances um, different altitudes are coming and it's descending at a rate of three degrees so um, it actually calculates uh, vertical speed in such a way that the plane still keeps on descending towards the runway LNAV is a type of navigation in which no VNAV is used. You don't use this option. VNAV, you just try to line it yourself. So with LNAV, you only align your plane with the runway. And then uh, to follow this glide slope, you just use your piloting skills. So that's why uh, the decision height or the altitude is coming as 433, or decision height rather, 433 feet and decision altitude is 2,180 feet. And that's it. Now the wrist is uh, there in the MCDU. So now if you look at this plan, actually I'm having this, uh, maybe you'll see, notice some uh, fuel issue <laughs> because I've been burning a lot of fuel. I'm at the runway. So that's why I just ignore this. So now for the approach, you can see it's coming and uh, you can see uh, after Salna, uh, plane goes to uh, SLD, Sialkot, which is a VOR in Pakistan at an airport, which is uh, in the city of Sialkot. And afterwards, the plane actually follows um, the arrival procedure, ND1A, ND1A, and uh, then after ISDU, there is this point, Renux, and then uh, this is IS411, and then you have the runway.
the altitude constraints are given. Yeah, uh, they are coming uh, with the star and uh, magenta color because it indicates that by this point the plane will be able to follow this constraint. And you can see OPI is 28 left, uh, 1,800 coming because uh, the um, the um, Istanbul International Airport is 1,747 feet above the sea level. Let me just also check it. Yes, it's 1,747 feet above the sea level. So that's why altitude is slightly high. So by this point, IS-411, you should be at uh, 3,000 feet, 3,700 feet. And then from this point, you will start to descend towards the runway and your heading is 278 degrees. Now I'm just going to fly this plane towards uh, Istanbul International Airport. And then I will also prepare this plane uh, for the uh, descent and for the landing. So now I will continue my video from there. Now the plane is crossing 11,000 feet and at this point I can configure the MCDU uh, for the descent and for the approach. So let's uh, go over here. Uh, this error will keep on coming <laughs> because you know my fuel calculations are just like messed up because you know I've been waiting for a very long time at the runway. Anyhow, you can just ignore it. So let's uh, go to the performance and uh, just start entering this information over here. So in Istanbul, QNH is 1003. Temperature is uh, 35 degrees. And uh, the wind is 320 knots uh, degrees 10 knots and uh, the transition altitude at which you change the barometric pressure from the standard to the given one is um, given in the approach plate for RNP so let's have a look at it and you can see transition altitude is coming as 12,000 feet so let's enter this over there and the minimums as I will be using LNAV and VNAV, so that's why uh, 2065 will be the minimums. 12,000 and 2065 for the barrel. Uh, full flaps landing, I will not be going for config 3, uh, rather I'll be going for full flaps and the approach speed will be 132 knots. That's it. Now for the uh, um, uh, radio navigation, we will not be entering any information over here. The VOR is coming for Sialcode. It's automatically tuned into the uh, Sialcode VOR because uh, we are going towards this uh, VOR. I think when we are near Islamabad, it will also tune into the Islamabad International uh, Airport's VOR, which is BTR. Uh, but right now, this is not the topic of discussion, so I will be um, covering this uh, topic once I'm doing the VR approach and landing. But for this video, everything is now done. We have entered you know, the approach information. So I can keep this page over here. So once I'm near the approach, I can also activate the approach phase. Now I'm near the top of descent and uh, over here, uh, I'm getting this error. Uh, if you look at the FMA, check approach selection. So this is happening with this plane. If you have selected the RNAV approach, uh, then this error comes. There is a very simple way to get rid of it. Uh, now let me just also set uh, the range uh, for this uh, navigation display so that I should know when to start my descent. Let me adjust the altitude. I will uh, bring it to 3700, which is uh, the altitude required at uh, the initial approach fix in order to intercept the glide path. I will just also show you this thing. If you find anything different in this plane right now, because um, I would just like to tell you that uh, I have actually restarted this flight because my fuel calculations were all <laughs> incorrect because I've spent a lot of time on the runway before the takeoff. So I had to do it again. So there is nothing, uh, a big change in it. Uh, everything remains the same. So uh, let me just uh, wait for this uh, top of descent to come near, or rather I can just uh, start it right now. So now uh, I've started the descent, 
towards the runway and now it's uh, time to uh, see how we can get rid of this error. Now this error is also coming over here. Uh, if I go to the flight plan and uh, I select the approach, uh, this might go away or rather I can uh, clear it. Let's see if it goes away. Let me just change the view and yes, now you can see it's no longer there. So let me just adjust the view uh, so that the MCD is clear. Now just to revise, once again, how you select the approach, you simply go to the destination, go to arrivals, and uh, you select uh, RNAV 28 left, and then ND1A. And uh, there's one more thing, you also have to select a wire if required. Uh, now you can see there are two wires coming, Kalmi and ISDO. Let's uh, just go to the approach plate and see uh, why we select ISDO or Kalmi. So if you look at the approach plate for RNP runway 28 left, you will see that uh, this approach plate is actually starting with two points, Kalmi and ISDO. Actually, these are the points uh, where um, the arrival procedure finishes and the approach procedure uh, starts. And these both points are actually taking you to your initial approach fix, which is Renix, uh, because at this point you should be at 3,700 feet in order to intercept the glide path. So from this point, uh, you will actually go to Renix or from Kalmi, you'll go to Kimul, and then you will fly in this heading, then turn left to Renix and then the final approach. So if you're coming from this part of the world, you use Kalmi, and if you're coming from this part of the world, you use ISDO. Another way to identify your wire is this, uh, that look at this uh, chart, the star, and see where your arrival procedure is finishing. So where your arrival procedure finishes, and your approach procedure starts, this is the point you select for wire. So I will select ISDO and that's it. I just took you through once again. So if you are not really familiar with the RNAV approach and the procedures, so I just wanted to make things more clear. Although I have just uh, gone through this uh, procedure um, at the runway before the takeoff. So let's now uh, wait for the plane to actually reach ISDO. At this point, you can see there is this constraint coming for this speed and for the altitude, 6,000 feet and above and 220 knots. So for this video, I'm going to divide it into two parts. In uh, the first part, I will talk about the approach mode. And um, the second part, I will talk about the LNAV and the VNAV. Now in the approach mode, obviously the LNAV and VNAV method will be used. But what happens is, is that once you are uh, near this point Renix or the final approach fix, you press this uh, button approach and the plane enters into the approach phase and uh, then you will start to see vertical deviation over here just like the ILS indicators. If you're flying fly-by-wire Phoenix simulations you also get the LDEV which is lateral deviation so it tells you that whether you are aligned with the runway or not and plus vertical deviation actually tells you how much deviation is there from the vertical path or the descent profile. So once uh, you are near this point you will activate approach and you will start to see VDEV. But LDEV will not come. So we will just uh, try to have visual contact with the runway and then try to land. But I will not be landing uh, this plane in this video or this part. Um, I will, let me just uh, also adjust the barometric pressure 1004 because we have crossed the transition altitude. Okay, so this is one thing that I will demonstrate it to you. Uh, so we will follow this uh, vertical deviation just like the ILS and the plane will then start to descend towards the runway. Then what I'll do is this, I'll just go around and come back again and I will show you that how you will land this plane if uh, you don't activate the approach. If you don't want to activate that and you want to land uh, using your altitude, and the, the manage mode for the altitude, then how you will do it. So I will tell you both the techniques. I've also done this uh, for the Boeing planes. Um, there is also a procedure uh, in the Boeing planes in which you activate this approach and the plane actually follows the vertical path. This is known as the integrated approach navigation or IAN. So in IAN, the plane automatically starts to follow the glide path just like the ILS. And then you also have the option of not um, activating approach mode and just using LNAV and VNAV to land. So in this video, I will tell you both the tricks. Uh, it's better to activate approach once you are 
near the runway. But if you don't want to use it, then there's another way of doing it. Now the plane is near ISDO and at this point 6,000 feet and above, 220 knots is the speed. And uh, what I'll do is this, I'll just set the flaps to position 1. And uh, now the plane is descending. Now at this point again, the speed will reduce to 210 knots. And I can further extend the flaps. Over here, I can also activate this approach and you will see this vertical deviation has started to appear. So now uh, I was descending to uh, 3,700 feet so that I am at the altitude of uh, this point Venix as explained in the approach plate so that I'm able to intercept the glide path. This is your final approach fix and this is your initial approach fix. Now the plane is going towards the approach. So as soon as uh, this box or rectangle is over here in the middle, the plane will then again start to follow the glide path. So you really don't have to do anything. Everything is, is in the manage mode. Now let's uh, set the uh, auto brakes to low and let's arm the ground spoilers for the landing. All the lights are on and everything is looking good so far. I've adjusted the altimeter also. Very much uh, required when you are doing an RNP approach, you should have the correct reading of the altitude so that, you know, your plane follows the glide path. The best thing about today's video is this, that uh, the visibility in Islamabad is really new. As you can see, um, hardly anything is visible on the ground. So I think it will be a good video to just show you that, you know, uh, how you should not perform an RNAV approach once uh, you have a low visibility. Because obviously, to a very good distance, you will not um, able to see the runway. You have to have some good visual range. Or as I told you before, RVR. So over here, 3,700 plus was coming and plane is at 5,000 feet. Still, you can see um, we are below the vertical deviation, so it's good. At some point, this will actually start to come down. If this was below over here, then um, there was a trouble. Then the plane ha has to actually descend at a very high rate in order to follow this. Now you can see the missed approach procedure has st also started to appear over here on the navigation display. So now uh, I will not land the plane. I will actually follow this path. I'll just go back to ISDO climb up to 6,000 feet and then I will come back again and tell you that if you don't activate approach mode then how you land this plane. Although this is more than enough, this plane is capable of carrying landing using this VDEV mode. Then now you can see final is coming. It's armed because you know plane is near. The final approach fix. Now I can lower the gears. You will hear this error. We can get rid of it. And if you go to the performance, you will see the approach mode has already been activated. So this is one thing which I just wanted to show you. Now you can see 2065, I said the barrel and still I'm below it, I cannot see the runway. So that's the issue. Now the plane is actually following the, the vertical deviation or the glide path. So that's the issue with the RNAV approach that uh, the runway is not visible. You can see uh, the plane is 1,400 feet above the ground and still the runway is not visible. <laughs> I have to zoom in to see the runway. So that's why in low visibility, yeah, RNAV is not uh, advised. However, there are many airports in the world which don't have uh, the ILS or the localizer facility. So that's why you have to carry out an RNAV approach at those uh, runways or airports. And um, there is this uh, one airport which I like the most, Kathmandu. 
So if you are trying to land at Kathmandu, which is in Nepal, it is only hour and a half. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to perform a go around and come back again and tell you how you will perform a landing without activating approach. So now I've performed a go around and I'm just uh, going to Venex again to perform an hour and a half approach. Now you can see uh, this flight plan is again there. And the best part about uh, the go around with this plane is this, that once you perform a go around, uh, the approach doesn't go away. You don't really have to select it again. And you can fly this approach again. So if you go to the flight plan, you will see this approach is coming. Is there? I actually activated that. The, the plane is straight away going to Phoenix. I have a video on my channel which tells you how to perform a go around. So if you're not really familiar with the procedures, you can just go and watch that. And uh, now you can see magenta stars are coming and different altitudes are coming, are coming, which means that the plane will be able to follow these altitudes. That's why there's no issue. If uh, the plane was not able to do it, then they would have been appearing in amber color. Now I've uh, set the flaps to position one or slats are there. Let's check if everything is good. Yeah, approach speed 133 knots. So if the approach phase doesn't start, then we have to activate approach. So now at this point, I'm not activating approach. The trick that I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set the altitude to 1800. This is actually the height of uh, the runway from the sea level. If you look at the approach plate, it's coming 1747. So I'm going to set it at 1800. Just round up the number. Now the plane is actually aiming for 1800. But uh, as there is a constraint over here, so that's why the plane will actually not go to 1800. It will actually start to go to 1800 after this point. So theoretically, this thing should happen. So let's see. So ground spoilers are activated and uh, all the lights and all the signs are on. And everything is good. I still have fuel left. Now you can see the plane is stabilizing at 3700. I can set the flaps to position 2 and now you can see that automatically the speed has dropped to 133 knots, which is the speed for the approach. So as soon as you will start having the flaps or extending the flaps, uh, the speed will reduce. As you can see, it's not appearing over here, but it's automatically done by the flight management computer and guidance system. So there's this uh, another way of doing it. But uh, if you can uh, do it with the approach, then don't use this method. <laughs> uh, you really have to practice a lot in order to, uh, you know, pull off this stunt. <laughs> Again, you can see visibility is really low. You cannot uh, see the runway. Even when I zoom in, I cannot see the runway. Oh, <laughs> the runway is on the left side. Excuse me for that. That was a good one, by the way. So now the plane has stabilized at 3,700. And after this point, it will start to descend to 1,800 without activating approach mode. And now you can see the missed approach procedure is also there. So if you are really good at uh, performing go-around procedures uh, and you learn how to do that, it's very good. You can practice different landings. You can practice ILS, RNAV, and plus VOR. So all the three approaches you can just like practice. Let's wait for this point to come. And uh, let's see what happens. Like you, you can see that plane is following the altitude constraint and uh, descent is armed. So it means the plane will descend eventually.
and uh, you can see now the descent has started and uh, it's 1800 it's coming over here it's armed and uh, soon the plane will descend it should if it doesn't oh yes <laughs> it started what a sign of relief now with this you can lower the gears and uh, full flaps the speed in started increasing because I didn't have full flaps and the gears were not down. That's why the speed was increasing. But now you will see the speed has started to reduce because the gears also provide drag. That's it. So landing gear down, signs on, cabin check and spoilers are armed. Flaps are full. And auto brake set to low. Now the plane has automatically start to descend and you can see this arrow is coming which is telling you that by this point you will be at 1800 which is not good. So what you can do is this, you can also adjust the vertical speed and just estimate that by what point you will be there at 1800 feet. So this is a very good indicator. I can maybe set to 12,000, uh, 1,200. And now you can see this arrow is moving. By this point, you can also deactivate the autopilot and you just try to land yourself. So auto, auto throttle is active, but now you will use all of your piloting skills to land this plane. In low visibility, we're performing our nav. Now you can see there's no vertical path coming or glide slope or glide path. But you have the papi lights, two white, two red. Just keep an eye on them. And they will actually guide you towards your path. And now I can just like further increase the descent rate as three lights are white, one is red. So now I can just pull back on the stick. At 30 feet, I can perform the flare. Thrust idle, pitch up, and uh, reverse thrust. And that's how you perform an RNAV approach using uh, the approach mode and not using the approach mode. So I have demonstrated both of the techniques. So now if you are landing at an airport and it doesn't have an ILS and only RNAV, you can perform this approach. Try the um, Kathmandu airport, you will enjoy it because you know the scenery is really good for that airport and it's an interesting approach. I hope this was a useful video and you would have learned many things from this video, but still if you want to add anything to this video, uh, the comment section is there for you. And if you want to ask me a question, you can ask me. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.